Good morning and welcome again to this Bible study. Today we are looking at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 through 32. And this passage of the Bible, as we've been studying, I love this book. It is so powerful. It has so much good in it for the church, for the body of Christ. And I believe today, if every member of the body of Christ, of the church worldwide, would examine the word, hear good teaching based upon the church, the kingdom of God in the earth today, we'd have a great move, we'd have great revival, we'd have a great love, and we need to learn to have a progressive revelation when it comes to our life, our connection to the church in which God has set us and planted us, how that is supposed to operate. We get that understanding from the overseers of the church who teach the Word of God, who live according to the Word of God. And through them, we learn and we grow and we are discipled. And today, I want us to look deeper and further into this book because we have learned and have read here. This is about when we started in the, in the very beginning of the book of Ephesians, we saw Paul by the Holy Spirit. This is God writing a book to us through the Holy Spirit, revealing to us who He is, what His will is for us, how the Bible says we should, after our salvation, learn how to live and behave, how that we should have our manner of conduct, how that we should join together, how we should understand things, how we begin to realize and understand the world, how we begin to understand the kingdom of God, the body of Christ. We need to have our perception and perspective, not based on how we feel, not based upon just our idea of things and how we think things ought to go, but according to the Word of God, according to the Scriptures. It's so important today that we get a hold of and grasp our concepts and ideas, our lifestyle, according to the Word. That's not religion, that's relationship. Why? Because God wrote the book. He is the one that put this to us and for us that we might get it in us, that we might live it out, that we might be a living witness and testimony of who he is in the earth today. You know, what we're going to read today and we're going to see today is how that the Holy Spirit is correcting the body of Christ in such a way because oftentimes as the people of God, we in life are just kind of working and we're doing life and we get so busy with life and, and all of those kind of things that really our walk and our relationship with the Word of God, with God, begins to dwindle, begins to weaken. And we begin to give place to other things in our life. We begin to give way to the way that Jesus has called us to walk in according to the Word of God. You know, when we say that we have a relationship or fellowship with Christ and His church, then it will become a manner of lifestyle, a way that we live. Our communication will relate to it. Uh, there won't be backbiting. There won't be division. There won't be people doing their own thing the way they see fit. No, we do things according to the way of the kingdom because it's the way of God, according to the will of God. When we get a revelation and an understanding, and I trust today that the very Spirit, as Paul spoke and wrote more than one time in the book of Ephesians, the prayer that he prayed, and he spoke to the spirit of the people hearing. He's, he won passage of scripture in Ephesians 1, and he said that the very spirit of wisdom and revelation, that's a progressive revelation, that's the spirit of wisdom. The wisdom is the ability to do the word correctly in our lives, to understand it and get a hold of it, to lay aside selfish ambition, lay aside selfish ways, and see Christ and humble ourselves before God, that we might walk worthy of the call that we as the body of Christ have with gifts differing, that even the devil, the whole world, will look at us as a, a different entity within the world, that we will be a people, a nation that has been set apart, that don't behave the same way, that don't have the same kind of communication, that don't act the same way, how that we don't backbite, we don't gossip, we don't do any of those things. And here's what Paul the Apostle and the and uh, by the Holy Spirit, what God is telling the church today. Again, and it's so important in our day. Why? Because the Bible says multiple times 
that in the, as we get closer to seeing the return of Christ, closer to that day uh, when the day approaches, that many will just heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, that many will turn from sound doctrine and they will just give heed to things that are self-satisfying, that are more convenient than it is commitment, that is more in line with their way of thinking instead of a biblical way of thinking. Because oftentimes our way of thinking doesn't make it biblical. Sometimes we can take a scripture and create a whole doctrine off of it and a whole way of life and what we will reject and what we will accept. Uh, but we need to be very wise and careful. We need to have an, a context of understanding. We need to have a string or thread through the Word of God, Old and New Testament. And thank God for the New Testament because the New Testament is the Old Testament fulfilled. And the Old Testament is, the new, is, is that New Testament uh, revealed. And, and let me just say this. It's so important today that we get a grasp of the Word of God, that we have teachers who will teach sound doctrine, who will... Uh, that we'll hearken to, uh, that we might abide uh, in this world unto God, living unto God. And today, as we begin verse 25, the Bible says this, it says, Therefore put away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. So the Holy Spirit says put away lying, or that's falsehood. You know, it's it's... What is a lie? What is falsehood? You know, uh, I think sometimes adults get really good at it, uh, better than children, because as a child, they're immature uh, so much, and, and it's, it's very easy oftentimes. You know, I know uh, not necessarily my child or, or some of that nature, because I don't want to tell off on them or something, but I do know and understand. I know myself growing up. Uh, you know, it's funny how that if when you're questioned by uh, the parent, uh, or an adult in a situation. Oftentimes, uh, if a child uh, will, will react when they're very young, you know, you might have, let's say, a three-year-old or four-year-old and that, that breaks a glass or something like that or, or knocks over something and, and they might not really be in trouble, but you ask them, uh, hey, did you break that? And they'll probably say, mm, no, it was there. Then you ask them again. Did you break that? No, the dog broke it. And then you ask them again, they might say, uh, you know, something else, a dragon flew by and knocked it off or whatever, you know, uh, it, because they're immature. But you can see through that. Oftentimes, though, in the body of Christ, and this is something we have to learn to do, one is we have to put away those falsehoods. We can't wear two masks. We can't have a mask on for church, a mask on for leadership, and a different kind of mask when it comes to the uh, fellowship that we have with one another. And it should be according to Christ. It should be according to the vision and kingdom of God, according to our relationship with God with one another. So that way it can be strengthened. So the bands and cords of love and unity can be strengthened, not weakened by having a falsehood. And this is what Paul is referring to. As, because when he talks about it, the neighbor, this term is not necessarily, it can apply, but not necessarily speaking to the person that lives next door to you. But again, it can apply because when that person, who that, whoever that is, is communicating negatively about other people in the body of Christ or about the church or about other things or they lie and they do other things and are their manner of lifestyle is not what it should be. Uh, then those people are going to have a reflection of the body of Christ. Those neighbors will have a reflection of the church based upon your actions, your communication, the way you do business, the way you do other things. And that is very important. But let me just say this. Our neighbor throughout the scripture generally is talking about those people, those members that are a part of the body and where God has set you. And you know, I think it's very important that you know where you're set. And when you feel God calling you there to be set, you get set. Yes, you're going to make relationships in the body. Yes, you're going to make relationships in the church. But not everybody's going to remain set for various reasons. But what does that do? Does that make you become unsettled? 
uh, or do you remain faithful and committed to what God has said to you, what God has called you to do? Does God send people? Yes. Does sometimes the devil move people? Yes. Does sometimes people just move because uh, they, they're not necessarily living according to revelation and living, or they're just living according to themselves? Yes, there's multiple reasons why people leave. But let me just say this, why they get unset. But what do we do? We pray. We stay settled in our heart and mind. We continue on in the way that we should go. And the Bible tells us that we should have a manner of life. If you notice, he says, put away lying. Let each of, one, of you speak truth. What is the truth? Uh, that's the word of God. That's why we need to live on a different level. Uh, that's why we need to have and to seek the relationship and fellowship with God as something to be valued. Uh, and I think that is so important. We, we should value our relationship with God more than anyone else. Because through that, he's going to give you life and peace and a good family and everything else is going to follow that. Let's keep reading. Verse 26, it says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down upon your wrath. And other translations actually tell us uh, in that verse right there, he, you know, the will of God isn't to be angry. I've heard so many Christians justify their anger and say, well, the Bible says be angry, you know, it's just, there's, it's funny, we can take certain scriptures and say, okay, it's okay to God that we can be this way. Uh, there's multiple times I've heard people make various uh, contexts out of something that gives them a justification uh, for being a certain way. But that's not what this, this scripture is saying. It's telling you, don't be angry. Because you allow anger to continue in you, you getting into sin. Uh, you need to repent of that anger. Uh, you need to have people say, well, Jesus was angry uh, when he whipped out, you know, uh, the money changers out of the temple and do those things. Well, let me just say it like this. When's the last time you whipped money changers out of the temple? When's the last time you wanted righteousness uh, in, in certain areas uh, where uh, it was the purity of things? Uh, and let me just say, oftentimes people get angry because they're not getting their way. Uh, they're not getting what they ex want or something of that nature. Uh, oftentimes, anger uh, comes from uh, a selfish point of view. And Jesus wasn't doing a selfish point of view, uh, but that's what this is leading and making an understanding to, because remember, he connected this to, to falsehood as well. Uh, so he says, be angry and do not sin. Uh, are you going to get angry at times, different things that happen? Sure, things are going to happen, but how are you going to deal with it? And how are you going to deal with that anger? How are you going to uh, uh, allow yourself to deal with it? Do you get angry and, and quit and give up and, and uh, do things that, that actually are sin? What is sin? It's missing the mark. It's not going as far as you should go when it comes to God and the things of the kingdom. It's not you developing yourself beyond yourself. And that's what he's referring to here as well. He says, don't let the sun go down upon your head. Don't, don't linger on it all day and through the night. Because when you do that, what's going to happen is the Bible says uh, you give place to the devil. That is a foothold. Verse 27, uh, by doing so, whatever you hang on to like that, you give a foothold to Satan. Satan, the devil, gets in there, and then it's kind of like this. Um, recently, uh, at Easter, uh, we had an outdoor event, and out there, uh, we had area blocked off. And it was blocked off for a particular, for the event, so that it kept... Uh, cars from going through, that was safe and all that kind of thing. But that's what this refers to when it says, nor give place. Uh, what, do you, what we do when we hold anger in us, and because it's, it's not, we're not repenting of that and humbling ourselves to grow and develop and understand and checking ourselves, because oftentimes it's easier to justify ourselves than to do what is right. Uh, and that is not allow ourselves to get separated, not allow ourselves to get off the way. But the Bible says this place of, uh, uh, of where Satan can get a foothold is literally like having a button. Or, uh, you know, when people say, well, you know, they just push my buttons. Well, that means Satan, you've allowed somewhere with anger and sin getting connected because you've held on to something, you've allowed a button or a trigger point in your life uh, some way uh, to get in you, and any time that the devil wants to pull you away, get you thinking about something else, he just pushes your button. 
Uh, all he's got to do is push a little button. Sometimes he has uh, other people who've said things to you that are not true or it's their own way or idea of things. Instead of the, them repenting, now they've created, helped create a button in you because you were susceptible to that. Uh, you have to be very wise. That's what the Bible is saying here. Don't give place which can control your mind, your emotions, where you have a trigger point the devil can use against you. Uh, oftentimes even people get a pride and a sense of duty uh, according to these trigger points and buttons that have been put there uh, and Satan has carved that out on the inside of you. Uh, and, you know, somebody, you, you, so they don't even have to push the button uh, for some people. I mean, it can be uh, just a, a casual hello and all of a sudden the button is pushed when they see somebody and they just go off. Uh, I tell you, uh, that's Satan who is inside working in that person's life. The devil is working in there. That's what the Bible's telling us. Look at verse 28. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Wow. Now, if we just take that concept today and use that concept according to what we do in life, you see, that's a different way of living. It's a different way of working and why we work and why we do what we do. Oftentimes, we still have the worldly concept which is about building our kingdom, personal lives, personal kingdom, and family uh, wealth and other things. Sure, do all of that. That's wonderful. But it needs to have its, its place. Uh, it's not first. Uh, the Bible says seek first the kingdom. Uh, we need to have an understanding uh, that we are there to help supply. Uh, we're there to uh, not only, this is not about donation, it's about tithing and offering and giving alms uh, where there is a need at times. It's about rising up and, and using resource in our life for God because our heart is right before God. Uh, to build the kingdom, to advance the gospel, the ministry, the discipleship of the body uh, of the world, the body of Christ, because the Bible tells us to go into all the world and make disciples. You know, here at Pursuit Church, we have a discipleship program uh, where we desire and want to see people go into the world. We want to help people. We have a Bible school. We're going to develop. We're developing. We've already got all of those things. Uh, we want to train and develop people that they might have the knowledge of the Word of God and not an area of pride, an area of submission, an area of connection, an area of uh, as a person uh, learns and understands uh, that their gift isn't for them, it's for others. It's there to benefit the kingdom of God because we've got one life to live. One life to sow today, uh, that it might that what is sown will produce fruit for eternity. Uh, and I tell you today, as the body of Christ, we can't let that go. We can't let the cares of this life. We can't let the worldly mindset and also oftentimes uh, people's uh, way of marketing the church. Uh, a lot of people uh, today have marketing the church uh, to get their to get wealth and the resources out of the church into other things. Where where wherever on every church you're part of, your resources and other things are there for the building of the kingdom of God to support that vision that God has set you in. Uh, be planted, get connected, know it, get it in your heart to fulfill it and do it. Uh, learn according to the word of God and let God be God. Uh, we can't play God. We have to let God be God over that house. And, and for every uh, vision, every church that has that vision, uh, it's greater than just uh, having a communal mindset. We're talking about the kingdom mindset. Should there be fellowship? Yeah. Should there be a, a sense of community, which is, which is so important, but it should be healthy. It should be a healthy emotional relationship based upon Christ in the center, based upon honor, based upon excellence uh, when it comes to conversation with one another, based upon a uh, building and not tearing down, based upon connection and unity of the spirit of the bond of peace to the vision, to the overseers and to those that God has uh, fitted us around and to that the same grace and anointing will flow through and touch our lives by God. And I tell you, that's so important. Today, the idea of relationship and religion uh, has taken on a whole culture within the body of Christ. Uh, people refuse what they call religion um, oftentimes because they, they tend to say, well, I don't have to be committed to anything as long as I don't feel like being committed. Uh, that's not, that's, that's not that, they say that's relationship. Uh, that's not relationship, uh, not with God. Now, don't get me wrong, not everything, in no church is going to be 100% on everything. 
But there's going to be, uh, if we'll do our best, many churches are doing their best uh, to live according to the level of the Word of God. And now there's other things out there that, that really are not that. Uh, they're just not that. Now, not every church, uh, they have different structures and orders and everything. And that's okay, too, as long as it's according to the Word. And I tell you, it's supposed to be, and that's, supposed, that's very important. Uh, you know, look in verse 29. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification? You see that? So this is the relationship the body has with one another. Not just on a Sunday to who you're supposed to talk good to, to everyone, to everybody, even your neighbors, even within your home amongst yourselves. Uh, you have to deal with things, putting things on altar to overcome certain attitudes and ideas, past experiences, past church life. Oftentimes, uh, you have to overcome certain things so you can be uh, fitted in the right way and you have to allow yourself to do that. That's called growth, personal growth, uh, to be able to do that. The Bible says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. I didn't say that. God said that to us as the body. But what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. You know, James 3, verse 10 through 18 says, out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Verse 11. Does a spring send forth fresh water and salt water or bitter water from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus, no spring yields salt water and fresh. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Oh, man, that is a whole series right there. It is so important today. We got to get our concepts based on the Word of God, our mind being renewed by the Word of God, our heart to do and to become what the Word is speaking to us. This is what the Bible speaks to us. Oftentimes we're trying to figure out what's my gift, what's my calling. Well, you begin to do these kind of things, those other things that get revealed to you more and more when you have the heart to do these things. And God can, he knows the heart of a man. Uh, we can say it with our mouth. We can even think of ourselves that way. But if our actions are differing from this, then our mind and heart are not what they appear to be to ourselves. We have to not allow ourselves to let deception in. We need to humble ourselves. Let the meekness of wisdom uh, be there. Uh, but if you have bitter envy, self-seeking in your hearts, that's what the Bible says. If you have belt, th this strife in your heart is actually, in New King James and many other translations, it means self-seeking or self-ambition. Uh, if you have bitter envy, self-ambition and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast because you're lying against the word or lying against the truth because the truth is not there. It's not working on you and in you. You're still trying to, to be what you want. You're just still trying to get your way. You still want the church to conform to some idea that you have or some of that nature. Now, again, it needs to be on the level of the word. If the church isn't operating on the level of the word, I mean, there's a lot of hireling churches out there today. Uh, there's a lot of different things going on. You know what a hireling church is? That's where the church is based upon hiring and firing. Uh, the overseers of the church are those who have the fivefold ministry gift. Uh, those are the apostle in which is there, which is a sent one of God. That's the pastor. Oftentimes we call different giftings pastors today within the church. That's okay uh, because they're there to shepherd you, to teach, and to oversee the church. Uh, now there might be others that are delegated uh, through the leadership and oversight of the church, which is in the kingdom of God today, uh, which I believe there should be accountability uh, for those that are in the church by other uh, outside sources as well to oversee and to have some say into those areas. Uh, I think there should be divine relationship concerning the oversight. I don't think it's just uh, somebody on their own. Uh, here at Pursuit Church, we have various pastors uh, and ministers uh, that, that help and connect and help us uh, with the oversight of the, of the, of the leadership. Uh, and because I think that is so important to have that kind of relationship and kind of connection uh, as well uh, within the body, within the church itself. 
Uh, they, they are uh, overseen by those leaders of the church uh, which have proven, which are appointed, not just self-appointed, self-ambitious, uh, not just because they have a particular talent or gift, but, and thank God for all of those things, uh, but when, they're, when they are uh, there to, to give that guidance, there are people to do that. And we should iron, sharpen iron. Yeah, we should have ironing, sharpen iron in the church. That is so important. Again, that's divine fellowship, um, uh, spiritually, emotionally, spiritually, emotionally healthy. That means our emotional uh, health is coming out of the spiritual walk. That means uh, we're not lying against the truth, but the word of God is working in us uh, through the meekness of wisdom. We are receiving the engrafted word that we may do it. And verse 15 says, if we're not abiding against that, that kind of wisdom, the earthly man wisdom, selfish wisdom, verse 15 says, this wisdom, wisdom does not descend from above. I mean, this is not coming down from God, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Wow. For we're envying and self-ambition and self-seeking exist. Confusion. That's why some people who are in the body of Christ are confused. Uh, they're confused. Well, I don't understand. I just don't understand. The reason why they still have too much self-ambition, too much selfishness in their heart and in their life. Uh, too, they're not in a place of teachable spirit of the wisdom of God. That's what meekness is. One who has humbled himself to a place of being teachable, that the wisdom of God, the ability the desire to do the word of God, to obey God, to follow God, not just get God to fulfill their life and give them a better life, to give them more stuff and to make them great. No, we're going to make God great. We're going to make the kingdom great. No, we're going to make uh, the gifts and the body of Christ coming together and let the body stand up as one as the world can see Jesus in us. And that's important. That's what we're striving. If we're going to strive, we're going to strive together for the peaceable unity to walk together as one body, one mind, and one heart. And that's what the Bible says uh, is the way to do church. That's what the church is. Uh, but not, not broken up in cliques and groups, divided amongst themselves. Just to, uh, It shouldn't be that way. Verse 17. Uh, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Can you hear the purity in this word today? Then peaceable. First it's pure, then peaceable. First pure, then peaceable. I'll tell you, when it's pure uh, in you, you'll be a peaceable person in the body. When the word that's in you that you're abiding by and the way your thoughts are and the way you think, according, if you'll let this word get in you to make you peaceable, first of all, to purify you, to wash over you, washing, washing your weight, washing all of that stuff out, testing your heart, oh God, help me to be rightly related, help me be connected forever, uh, to, to, to be able to have that right understanding. Not giving ourselves uh, outs and giving ourselves, well, if, you know, no buttons. Uh, and then he says, it'll be peaceable, gentle, willing to yield. That means willing to submit, willing to submissive, submissive, uh, full of mercy. And he's talking to the body, he's talking to all of the church, but he's talking to each and every one. Full of mercy and good fruits without partiality <laughs> and without. Hypocrisy. I tell you, hypocrisy is so important. Because what is hypocrisy? Well, you know, you wear a mask to somebody and you say, well, I'm with you. I do this, I do that. And then one next, next day, the mask is off. Or when you go home and you take the mask off, I, you know, and it's a different, different mindset. No wisdom, no, no understanding. Uh, not trying to grow, not trying to understand. This is hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is living, uh, saying one thing, looking one way, and then doing another. Because there's selfish ambition. There's other issues going on, which is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Uh, working uh, in the mind where, where our heart's not being teachable. We're not casting down imaginations according to the Word of God to do it. Now look at verse 18. It says, so, but when, when the Word is sown in us and we receive this truth and uh, we're not lying uh, to ourselves." But we're allowing the word of God to pierce our heart and our mind. And I say, God, I need that to be, I need to change. I want to grow. I want to mature. I want to walk in the right kind of love. I want to have the heart that you have for your kingdom. Verse 18 says, now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. So we're talking about those who make peace. He says, by those who make peace. So he says, those we're talking about people where it's pure, they're peaceable and gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without pockets. That means, that means we're not picking and choosing. 
uh, what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. We're not picking and choosing what I'm going to believe and not believe. We're going to believe the Word of God, the whole counsel of God. Uh, we're not going to leave it out. We're not going to have buttons, all of those kind of things. No, we're going to uh, become a peacemaker within the body, within the church. And the Bible says, verse 30, it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. We're going back here now to Ephesians 30. It says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So those kind of things grieve the Holy Spirit of God, which is in the church, in the body. Yes, He's there with us, but He's there to compact us together as well. That's what the gifts and the Holy Spirit and the working of the anointing should do. And that's when we yield to it, when we submit to it. By whom we are, it's not about, well, I like it because they have these things. No, you know, oftentimes the body of Christ today, in many ways, look for those kind of things, which is, you know, self satisfied. Gives them convenience, uh, no commitment, nothing going beyond. Uh, oftentimes, and they feel like, well, that's a weight, that's too much. No, it's not too much. You got to let the, you got to cast off the, the commitment to the world and the commit, but have a commitment to the kingdom, more. And this is what verse thirty says: says, "Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from among you with all malice." That means we have to put away these things. You have to put it away. Nobody's going to do that for you. Nobody's got to change to make that happen for you. You've got to put it away. You have to do it without partiality. That means, well, uh, this way I was treated or this way this happened. No, you have to put away all of that. Verse 32, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God and Christ forgave you. I'll tell you today, this is such a powerful word. And there's so much more we could talk about in this area here. I'll tell you, it's so important today the body of Christ to get a hold of this. So that way we can run our race without getting taken out of the way. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ can fulfill its mission and call in the earth today. Listen, I believe if this message touched your heart today, take it before God. Let's, let's examine our hearts today in our minds. Our manner of life, is it living according to the truth or is it living according to the other things that might be working in us that are not, that are not pleasing to the Holy Spirit. So let's please God today. Let's, let's take it before the throne. Can I just pray for you? Father, I just pray today for every hearer who hears this teaching today. I ask you to strengthen them in their hearts. God, give them the purity. Wash over them today by your word and your spirit. Purify their hearts. God, I pray today that there are those who've been hurt. God, that healing will come. God, those that have acted wrongly towards the body, God, that they can even find a place of reconciliation. God, that they can present themselves before the overseers and, and, and become one and connected into that body. God, you said that, uh, the, that a thief climbs up another way, but the sheep enter through the door. And Father, you set shepherds at that door, God, to, for the sheep for in the fold. God, I pray today that many women... Father, we'll hear your voice today. They will humble themselves. They will enter in, God, that we might fulfill everything you've called us to do, and that is to build the kingdom of God. And Father, I just thank you right now that your peace is upon us. God, those who will sow peace today, let them reap great reward in Jesus' name. Amen.